starting. There we go, arch critique time. Today I'm thinking on a Wapo and I was thinking on a Pyro Wapo, I guess there's also the Pyro here, so it's a sign that we should do it totally, it's like Arm of the Universe or whatever. And it's a secondary, can you guess what it is? The Gardener, I crafted one yesterday and got one today. Uh, where, is, where are the power weapons? Uh, it's in this page, can you guess, can you guess, can you guess, can you guess? If you guess the Mount Mouter, you are right! Hooray for the Mount Mouters, I have a bunch. I still, also still gotta <laughs> melt my access items, but anyway, let's do things one, one step at a time, right? The Mount Mouter. So, first things first, uh, some disclaimers as usual. Uh, this is gonna focus more on the visual sides of, side of things here. And uh, this is not a discussion on game design properly. I'm just gonna bump a bit into game design. But, uh, you know, just for you to know. And also, for this critique, I'll be following Feldman's method which is all about going through four steps in order, description, analysis, interpretation, and judgment. On the description I describe what I see, on the analysis I'll look into the elements of art, on the interpretation I interpret the creative vision behind the art, and on the judgment step I'll look into the principles of art to call this successful or unsuccessful art. So without further ado, let us begin! Uh, description, what do I see? Well, we have here some sort of very unique gun, I would say. It, it, it has like the grip of the gun, right? It has a trigger and kind of like the shape of a gun, roughly. But has so many like details and stuff in it, right? Also has, I guess, a, some sort of muzzle at the end of it. Although it's hard to make out a cylinder and a barrel for a gun here. Maybe this could be the barrel of the gun. Uh, you know, but the cylinder here is weird. What else? Uh, so as I said, we have like this stuff on top of it, which is like, has these undulated details. I don't know exactly what this is. Has this, what's this, a capsule? thing at the back. If we think on the gameplay, I think we know what this is for, what this is about, but let's just describe it for now. Uh, what else? There is this part down here that I have, in which I have no idea what it's used for. Does it emit some sort of radar or something, I don't know. Has this side uh, circular details, right? Which again, don't don't know if I can conjure, conjure up exactly the function of it. But they are kind of attached to the upper part of the gun on one side and the lower part on the other. So I don't know if they are just there for style. And there's uh, finally some small ring thing at the very bottom of the grip of the gun, I guess. And... Uh, yeah. And also... Okay. No, so on this weird muzzle thing, uh, I was thinking maybe it was blocked off, but I do think it's hollow, so okay. Uh, I don't know, I think that's a good enough description, so just a very unique gun, right? And as I said, uh, missing a cylinder. Cylinder is where the bullets are, in a gun. And a pistol, for example. And uh, we don't see it, but other than that, uh, yeah, all the other traits, many of the other traits of a gun. So yeah, uh, that's it. I think that's a good enough description. Let's move on to the analysis. For this analysis, I'm gonna be considering eight elements of art. Usually you're gonna see seven, but some authors consider eight, which are the usual lines, shapes, forms, space, texture, color, and value. And some authors add points to that, and that's what I'm going to do. So let's begin. I can choose any element, but I like to start with points. Let's see if we can find any points here. Okay, uh, maybe there's some on this part of the gun, but again, the, as usual, 
they are kind of around other effects of texture. I do believe they are more complementing the textures here. So probably gonna be easier to... Instead of set stuff saying, oh we have points like this and textures like this, I'm gonna just say there are textures in so in so way. If uh, this would be like white points on the grip of the gun, let's say. The important part is the color and the where they're placed since there's not much else to talk about for points anyway. But what else? Uh, anything else that would be I could would consider a point? Uh, I think not. Texture wise or not. I think uh, I think this is rough a pointless. Ha! Got it! <laughs> uh, you guys what I mean. Okay, so not much else to say for points. Let's talk about the lines now. So for lines, um, uh, often in Fortress True aesthetics involves lack of lines. surfaces of things in the work of art and so what else yes like uh, here also this would be this like a gray, very light gray lines I think it's gonna make more sense to talk about them for textures if I were going to, if I were to analyze them as lines I would just say they are very thin and straight in general and uh, light gray and on the group of them uh, what else also have all these details do not be fooled I think somewhat uh, Again, I, okay, I was thinking, I was gonna say we can call them as farms, but I'm not sure if we could also either it's better to, to analyze them as farms or textures, this part of the gun. Uh, not sure. Maybe we'll also call them textures, but a different texture than the, the light gray parts. What else for lines in here? Is similar logic, I would call this a roughly. Rusted, rusty texture, I guess. On the junctioned parts of the mount melter, you know, on the attached parts of the gun. I do believe that's more of a reasonable analysis, personally. Uh, what else? Here, something similar. Let's see. Uh, maybe not. Is it as rusty as the other one? I don't know, am I, is, are my eyes deceiving me? Yeah, let me rest, it, rest them a little bit. And see with it with calm, with, with uh, calmness and care. Carefully. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to make, to make out details here, right? Because we can't zoom in, and uh, and this is kind of important for us to look at this weapon like this because this is considering the author's presentation, because this is a part of a game, so of that kind of matters, as I see it at least. Um, because, for example, details that uh, weren't aren't easy to notice by the author's presentation shouldn't be that well that important for calling this success or not, you know. That's how I see it, at least. Because at the end, the idea is when you we call the art successful or not, it's all about if the author accomplish what they set out to do. You know, the, the what they set out to do to make was the vision. Then the principles are gonna see how they applied that. The principles are basically how the elements were used, etc., etc. But anyway, back to hear to hear this. Uh, I would I would say there's like some very faint line here. It is a in this part. Not sure we would also say it for this other one on the junction that part of the gun. Maybe a black and straight line. Just 
general the thickness doesn't change so yeah i guess that's it anywhere else for lines uh there's again i believe this looks more like a uh an effect for another element of art on this part it, because it seems like there's some very slight light would this be something of a kind What's the word I'm looking for? Some sort of warm texture. Texture, I guess. Uh, lines over here on this part, texture is much like in the grip of the gun. Likewise for the muzzle. I'm not sure if I should call this a muzzle, but anyway. Um, I don't know if there's a better way to describe that. And for the rest, uh, I believe there are no lines, or there are again like. Uh, worn out textures because on this part here again we see, I see some very faint light gray would be lines but I think they it makes more sense to analyze than as textures as worn out textures textures of something worn out you know yeah uh, if I'm going to do that I'm not sure I see any other lines here yeah would be just this one in the middle because I think the thing is, for the one on the intersection, I think I see some like gradient, very faint gradient of brown, something like that. I could be like completely seeing things here, but I don't think I see it for this one. And uh, if that's the case, I will, I will call this a line, but I will call this a rusty texture. You know, that's my my logic here. Okay. Uh, with all that said, uh, that's it for lines. Not much to talk about, right? But there's gonna be a lot for textures, I guess. What about shapes? Shapes is what's interesting because, by the way, shapes there is shapes and forms. Shapes are always two-dimensional stuff. Forms are three-dimensional stuff in an art critique. Uh, in real life, you know, we kind of use those terms interchangeably, but in an art critique, that's the difference. So yeah, a lot of curvature, a lot of like. Uh, for example, on the grip of the gun, through many angles. Now, since shapes are actually dimensional and this is a 3D object, uh, changing angles changes the shapes. But uh, in any case, the grip, through many, if not all of the angles, there is this curvature, this is very noticeable curvature. Some kind of a. It would be a. No, I don't think I'm gonna call this an oblong or a rectangle or something like that in shape. I think it's different enough to warrant its own, to, to not be labeled as such, let's say. What else? For the gun, the, the, all the details gives a lot of intricate shapes with, for example, many crevices on this part here, many thin, very thin shapes here for this part on the top, this one, the details on the muzzle, what else? Uh, if we're looking at things broadly, there is the shape of the gun itself which is has the this, mid, this middle part here and then it gets a bit thinner for the barrel of the gun what else for shapes uh, so this part here i think we could, could we can call an oblong this sort of capsule this would be an oblong oblong shape there uh pointy shapes for the trigger from you know, many angles you see the pointed details on it anything else uh, some circular details on both sides of the gun and what else for the mount outer a little protruding shape here what else I think that covers most of the shapes ah and I didn't mention but also a uh, ring shape for the ring uh, I, get, I, get, I guess that's good enough for the shapes if we talk about the forms uh, the forms as I said is all about three-dimensionality and again we see a, a number of curvature with this like uh, 
thick cylindrical like forms for the grip it's kind of a twisted cylinder a bit also noticeable curvature some kind of something a little bit oval for the the middle part of the gun let's say other than that again some very thin style tube like forms for the details these details of the gun uh, the muzzle the antenna part thing at the bottom this other one on top what else uh, i also think about game design i think i, I think I, because of the game design, I think I can conjure up the function of this upper part here, now that I think of it. Of it. What else? Uh, at least I guess. That's I guess. But for the farms, there was a protruding shape, and this is a protruding farm. The back, that was a oblong shape, and this is a capsule, the form of a capsule, a cap capsule farm, <laughs> much like I described it on the description. Uh, what else? Uh, for farms, there are all these details, kind of crevices, and their farms in general give a kind of a. How would I describe this? It's kind of a very unique farm. Not sure there is any easy comparison here. You know, it has a somewhat flat upper part, and there is this many layers, and uh, somewhat of a flat flat sides, but then it has a curvature in front, very unique form there. Anything else that I mention? And I guess and finally we have this kind of a hook-like forms for the triggers, and uh, again a ring form for I think that's it for farms in general, in general. Uh, we don't need to... It's hard, and I don't think we need to go through every single pixel here. <laughs> so yeah, but I think I covered the most, I think, noticeable ones, at least to me. Farms. Uh, moving on from that, let's talk about the element of space. So, uh, as usual for guns with many details on Team Fortress 2, there's a lot of tightness. For example, some tight space on the trigger, some tightness here between this two parts of the underside of the gun, this antenna thing and uh, the support, the thing that's supporting it I would say. Some tight use of space here on this open muzzle, again I don't know if this is a muzzle, a muzzle but anyway. Uh, some very minute space for the crevices, again tightness around the details of the capsule and this, this switch I guess. <laughs> What else? Also inside of the ring, you know. Oh, so a lot of many examples of of uh, tight use of space. Other than that, uh, perhaps I could say there is some moderate amount here because of the curvature of the grip. There is a, perhaps you can say that there is some moderate amount here near the trigger. Inside the trigger is very tight, you know, clearly. But here you can say there is kind of a moderate space. And other than that, it's just uh, expensive in general, right? It's like nothing too easily noticeable. I say expensive considering the frame of the picture, naturally. Uh, what else? Yeah, I think that's it. A lot of tight spaces. Uh, let's talk about the, finally the element of texture that I mentioned before. So let's begin with the, what I was talking about for points and lines. So this uh, this is in, this. The part seems to be some sort of either worn out texture, as I said before, or maybe some sort of scrape it texture, if something like scrape it at this, at this, the grip of this gun at one point, because of the appearance of the texture here. Uh, what else? The bottom part, it seems more like, uh, not eroded, more worn out, but on the other ones, I don't know. Uh, what else for textures? Ah, some very translucent glass like for the capsule, easy. I mentioned before, and let's mention it again here on the proper element. Uh, I see some very faint rusty textures on the attached part of the one melter. Uh, ah, this is, I said this, I was mentioning this before, and so this part of the grip of the gun. Uh, I didn't mention it for farms, I might as well mention it for texture, I think it fits better. 
this will be some sort of a uh, not sure if rugged is the best way wrinkle texture maybe you know the many pattern the uh, con concavities this perhaps like wrinkled or I think a rugged might not be a good fit. Let me see an example for rugged texture real quick to refresh my memory. Uh, just because it's easy and shouldn't take much time. Rugged texture. Yeah, maybe rugged is not the best description for it. I would say like a wrinkle texture. Maybe rugged could be, or what I call the worn out texture, maybe rugged would be uh, another way to describe it. But yeah, let's call this some sort of a wrinkle texture or a pattern texture, another way, another word we could call this a pattern texture. What else? Uh, ah, and similarly, that similar thing on this part here. Again, some sort of either wrinkled or pattern texture because of these many crevices. I don't know if, if there is something like a creviced texture, but anyway. Uh, what else for textures? Not sure if there is anything more than that. I mentioned the worn out part or rugged part again here on this like border of this part of the, uh, the edge of it. What else? Um, There is this part here, which looks like a bit of a what burnout texture, like this two darker points here, right? Not sure. Maybe a bit of a burned texture there, burn marks. And uh, other than of that, for something so gray and you would expect more metallic textures. I see like a lot of effect from lightning, which is a the element of value. We're gonna get to that later, light and darkness. But for metallic textures and stuff like that, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe on, for example, details like this small antenna thing or the muzzle. Yeah, maybe we can say they have some metallic textures also on this detail here on the that connects the side of the gun to the upper part and bottom part. Maybe we, we can say they have metallic textures. So yeah, uh, I think that's it for me when it comes to textures. What about uh, what about what was it? color. What about the element of color? Ah, <laughs> very easy, right? There's basically gray. <laughs> That's it. Gray, 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 gray. Yeah, sometimes it's, it's, it's grays and shades, gray and shades of gray. Perhaps here on the bottom part, is this a black or a dark gray? Great question. Maybe you can say this is black on the very bottom of the grip of the gun. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of shades of gray. And there's this very small detail in red on the capsule at the back part of the mount melter. So, yeah. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Just a lot of gray and those small things in black and red. So, and finally, the last element of art the, for me to talk about value. Which is about light and darkness, brightness and shadiness. So, again, since this is a 3D art, depending on the angle, that's gonna change, as you can see easily. Like on this angle, for example, we have a very bright uh, light reflecting on the surface of the mount melter, but on other ones, like less so. There's just like a little bit on the edge of it. So, but through most angles, there is often some noticeable illuminated parts, some noticeable brightness, at least on one part of it or another. Even like on this, you can see this underside part of the gun reflecting some light. So, a lot of illumination, very common for to be seen here. Which, by the way, is tied to the, I would believe, other aspects of the game design of the game, 
of the game as a whole, not just the Moon, Moon, Moon Melter, but whatever. It's a part of it. Um, and for that's it for lightness and for shadows. It's usually easy to find at least one shadow somewhere. Uh, let's see. It, like depending on this angle, this underneath part here gets a bit shadier, understandably. What else? So there's that shady part un underneath. The rest is just like uh, unreflected parts, but I don't see them as being too dark, too shady. Like this here, it's like we see part I see parts with like them being reflected, but I don't think I see many shadows. As I said, just on the under side part here again. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Like shadows on the other side, a lot of illuminated parts on, through many angles, many parts of it. Yeah. So that's it for the analysis. Let's move on to the interpretation of the creative vision. First things first. Uh, Unless there is some sort of hidden history behind the Mount Melter, I'm gonna be interpreting one that this is a weapon for the Pyro 1442. Easy stuff, as always. Uh, unless there's some very unique story behind it that it was designed for another game and it was added to Team Fortress 2. But uh, since I don't know of anything like that, for now I'm gonna add that. So, Pyro Weapon 1442. What else for the creative vision? Uh, also, this was launched on the. Not sure if I remember the name of the update. Invasion update. The update with a bunch of sci fi weapons and thematics and stuff. There was the comics where uh, uh, some sort of space uh, spaceship capsule from another dimension breaks engineer's house, <laughs> and inside of it there is the weapons like the Man Melter. And so. Yeah, through all of that, and also considering like all these unique details of it, with very like it has such a unique design that I think could could easily tie to sci-fi. So I will say that I interpret this being a also and I also interpret this as being a conveying ideas of something sci-fi that could be in a sci-fi movie comic story. So yeah. Or Apple, something sci-fi, what else? If you think specifically on the game design, stuff like, uh, that that's what I was thinking before. Uh, in game, we know that when you extinguish a teammate with this weapon, you, you start crit, and I believe that's what this capture is for. And also this part on the top of it, I will guess, it suck. in game it has an animation of you sucking the fire from a, a teammate, right? And I, so that could be the function of it. Now we considering it. I'm talking about this on the interpretation because now we can consider the context and stuff like that. So now we don't need to ignore that kind of stuff. If anything, we must not. We, it's better that we don't ignore those kind of stuff. But anyway, there's also the fact that this does not consume any ammo, another mechanic of this weapon. Uh, what else? Star crit. Ah, and uh, when you extinguish someone, you, you start crit. You don't need ammo. What else? There is the whole recharge that reloads by itself when you switch weapons. Classic for the pyro. Okay, but uh, how, how does any of that translate into a vision for this weapon? Uh, if I'm going to put it into words. Especially with stuff like there's the item set, the Mount Melter Spotify, an item set, right? Which is the Flog, the third degree, and the Mount Melter, and the, also the other cosmetics, the Moon Man backpack, and the Bubble Pipe. So I also forgot that it doesn't create what else. Uh, and has increased projectile speed, I guess. I didn't mention that. Uh, and also, this kind of stuff helped us from the interpretation, the description on the loadout. Being a device that floats conventional scientific consensus, that floats, sorry, not floats, it floats, I don't know the pronunciation, that molecules composing the human body must be arranged just so and not, for example, across a square mile radius. Okay, so, yeah. 
uh, it uh, spreads people's molecules ac across the square mile radius, I suppose. <laughs> but anyways, so all of that uh, stuff for us to take into account for the, our interpretation here. But what I, was, uh, what I was going to say, for the item set, so it has this item set, you know, it's kind of a fun thing that you can do, play dress up with this item set, let's say. And notably, the f for this item set, the flog here, the flog is the only pyro apple that does not have a air blast, right? Which can extinguish teammates. And very interestingly, the Mung Melter is the only pyro secondary that can extinguish. Ah, sorry. Not the only, one of the few pyro weapons that can extinguish the teammates. The other ones are the gas passer and the. Where is it? The thermal thruster. The thermal thruster. So. Yeah, pyro has actually like what? Half of the pyro secondaries can extinguish teammates. That's our conclusion. Uh, we have like, those three plus the score shot, flare gun, detonator. Plus the shotgun, and, ah, it's not half because it has, still have the stock shotgun and the what's the name of it? Reserve shooter. But still, yeah, three of Pyro's weapons can extinguish teammates. But anyway, interestingly, the flog still is the only pri Pyro primary that does not uh, cannot extinguish teammates, and it's interesting to have the Melter in that item set being one of the secondaries that can do that. You know, I think that's a very easy to. I think that is a very simple logic, easy to look at it. So all of that to say that I uh, believe it was part of the creative vision that this weapon had that property of being able to extinguish teammates, you know, tied to the game mechanics. But uh, also uh, considering what I said for the description, there's this part here, there's the cap capsule, that's the, the way this weapon works in game, all of that. So... Uh, I interpret that was a part of the visual, you know. So of course, uh, it's also it's always important. It's also important to ask stuff like, but what if what if it was a okay okay? We don't need to ask that always. But what I was, what I was going to say is that uh, sometimes you gotta ask yourself if it was meant to be conveyed secretly sometimes it was the intention of the author to hide, to be secretly something, you know? You know when you see those characters which are... For example, World of Warcraft, the dragons often take human forms to walk among people, you know? So they're secretly dragons and then we can say they're secretly that stuff. For the Melzer, since I don't see, I don't believe that there is any reason to believe that should be a secret, I'm just gonna add that this should be meant to, in the vision, to be something that extinguishes teammates, you know? Yeah, all that stuff. Uh, tied very strongly to the game design, right? But uh, yeah, that's why, but that's a part of it. And, uh, and I, since, and since I don't see any, re any reason to believe this should be a secret, uh, so I'm just gonna add that to the vision, or to the interpretation here. What else? Anything else? Uh, yeah, ah, just to say, all that logic. Uh, so I don't think I phrased it properly, but basically the idea is that this weapon would cover up uh, the flog, one a weakness of the flog, basically. So you know. Because they just said, oh, it was meant to be using the flog, but less the Mount Melter, possibly if you are going to follow the item set. But namely, the idea is to cover that the, the Mount Melter can cover a flog weakness. That's my interpretation. But anyway, uh, so so far, Pyro Apple, Sci Fi, Extinguished Teammates. Anything else for the creative vision here? There's also the other stuff that I talked about, of the idea of uh, not needing, that we have seen, not needing ammo, spreading people's particles. The idea of spreading people's particles, I think, are very close to something sci-fi, you know, just for the terminology of it. The idea of not consuming ammo... Uh, could be also type sci-fi, I believe. You know, it's like some some alien technology or something. Uh, 
Also, now that I think about it, on the comics specifically, this Wapo, the Mummy Alter, and all the other Wapos from that update from the comics, they came specifically from another dimension. <laughs> they came from. Can I show it? Uh, sorry, the Wapos. Yeah, there you go. They came from. Oh no, sorry. It was the engineer I just sent. There you go. They came from Dr. Grargebart's uh, dimension. It's actually, I believe, a real character from a comic or something. I'm not sure. I, I've read, I've saw a little something about that some other day. But anyway, yeah. Uh, I'm not familiar with that fandom, but in any case, uh, they came from another dimension, from that dimension, and uh, which I believe is a sci fi uh, fandom, a sci fi story. So I just wonder if I should, like, uh, say. I, maybe it's. Oh. To very close together, right? I was thinking, should I say this is from another dimension? But I don't know, maybe... If we're gonna consider that it comes from Dro Dr. Grardbard's dimension, that's a sci-fi comic, I think. Uh, then maybe it's already inside of the sci-fi reference stuff. Uh, so far, the interpretation, I don't think there is anything else that I see here, really. I think those three points cover it good and well enough. Uh, so... Pyro Apple, something sci fi, and something that extinguishes your teammates because of the uh, item set with the flog and the way one weapon would cover the other weaknesses, stuff like that. Okay, so let's move on to the judgment step now. Uh, for the judgment step, I'm gonna be considering six principles of art. The principles change a lot depending on the author, but for me, after my studies and comparing uh, articles, I guess, I, I'm gonna be considering movement, unity, contrast, emphasis, balance and proportion. Stuff like hierarchy I'm gonna add into emphasis, stuff like pattern, repetition, continuity I'm gonna be con adding into unity and be considering like, uh, what was it, that uh, methods for achieving unity, and etc and so on and so forth. Uh, anyway. So I like to begin with movement usually, which uh, as I like to remind you does not have anything to do with animations. It's more about how a work of art can move your eyes in some sort of path or direction. There is a thing. Arrow signs in real life are an example of that. <laughs> for example. And yeah. Uh, so, for movement here. Let's see. Uh, just let me present my eyes a bit. I think it doesn't, doesn't hurt. So, for the principle of movement. Uh, mm, since the weapon has so much curvature and it's kind of short, many parts of it are somewhat short, I would say, that doesn't help um, too much. I see a little bit of it on through the shapes and forms of the weapon. Of the on broader terms, we have like a fatter, thicker part of it in the middle, and then it gets a bit, little bit thinner on the, as I've been calling, muzzle of this gun. So that helps a little bit to me convey movement. Other than, the, other than that, uh, the pattern textures help to me convey a little bit, no? go, go through them. And also here, but again, the wrinkled packed pattern texture make me go look from front to back. No? That's how I see movement here most strongly. Uh, there are always like smaller ones, smaller points of it, but uh, those are the strongest ones to me. Does any of that help uh, convey the idea is tied to a Wapo, Pyro Wapo for t for shoe? For movement. For, for movement, for movement. When it comes to movement, I don't think that's good enough. At most, we have, like, as I said, some sort of shapes and forms. Off a gun, you know. But uh, I don't think that's good enough. Uh, so, as 
as I often say, like there are other games with guns and stuff like that. So just for that, just for movement, I don't think that helps. That's good enough. But uh, for whatever, I guess. What about the idea of uh, conveying, of having sci-fi vibes, let's say, stuff like that. Uh, so now we have some unique design of it. For example, this muzzle is very unique, right? It's been called muzzle is very unique. It's, it has, it's like a, some sort of a cage on it. So that's some unique design. This part here that I mentioned uh, also has some unique design. And uh, is that enough to convey that something sci-fi? Maybe, because sometimes you see like weird designs in sci-fi, you know, because they have different technology. Either it's they're from aliens or different dimensions possibly, or just, uh, you know, from the future. <laughs> so I think it, it helps, it is good enough roughly. Since I did something as broad as sci-fi, you know, I didn't mention one specific movie or one specific fandom or stuff like that. I'm gonna say that it's helping convey that idea, you know, a little bit. Uh, when we go for broader visions, I believe, like, we don't, we, we can accept broader symbology, let's say. Because when I went, I was as specific as Weapon Power 14 for Pichu, to me, just Weapon wasn't good enough. But since I just said sci fi, I think just weird design helps convey it. Um, what about the, the uh, distinguishing teammates with this gun? In this case, I think the principal movement on this upper part is helping because of how it, the weapon works in game. As I said, uh, the way that extinguishes teammates, it's kind of suck out the flames, right? And so, and I'm guessing, uh, actually, maybe like it's not through this hole, but even if it's um, this middle one, I don't think there's any hole down here. But in any case, uh, the idea is the fire is sucked out. If it's through this upper part, then that's just perfect because it follows very well the movement, the principle of movement here. And then I would guess it's stored on this back part here of the caps capsule. And then the idea is you kind of imbue fire in your, in your shots, in your next shot. So it would kind of uh, be ejected through the other hole, something like that. You know, uh, if it happens in game, uh, I don't remember which hole that happens, that's kind of a detail, right? But if in game that happens on this upper part, then, then it follows very well how the movement, how, you know, the direction of, of, uh, of the movement here, right? But even if it's on the, if it's through the other hole, I think it's still fine, because we have like this idea of some, a direction from front to back toward, towards the the capsule. So we could say that like either it goes from up then down or down then up. It's, it's still I think good enough. The important parts uh, moving our eyes towards the capsule. I would say the, the, the fact that it's fire being sucked and coming from out from the outside of the gun to the inside, especially to the capsule at the back of it. So I see the movement helping here, especially as I said, if it's this top part here that does it. I hope it is, because then uh, there is little room for discussion here, I would say. It's gonna be harder to make a counter argument, I guess. But yeah, uh, so happy with that. Uh, moving on, let's talk about the principle of unity. I'm, uh, I'm kind of... We're gonna talk about unity slash variety here. Some authors separate unity and variety, I'm gonna, which are the opposites, and I'm, I'm gonna be considering them together. You know, uh, because both can help convey the vision. And unity is about how different parts of the artwork can look like they're working together in some way. Again, as I said, uh, for this critique, I'm gonna be considering things like continuity, repetition patterns, uh, proximity, are methods for achieving unity. Some authors believe they are separate principles themselves, but you know, that's what I'm doing for this critique. 
and variance, variety, uh, which is the opposite of unity, is as the name suggests, you know how different, how much different stuff there is. So, for example, in this case, probably the capsule is the greatest source of variety, both in its unique shapes, forms, and the color, because I think that's the only oblong shape, the only capsule, like the only thing with the, cap the forms of capsule in the whole gun. And the, the, the red is present only in the capsule, so definitely some strong variety there. Uh, although, honestly, there are so many unique forms, especially forms, that uh, there's a lot of variety in, because of so many unique forms. Also, for example, I mentioned the edged part of the trigger, hook-like uh, forms, not sh shapes. Uh, the hook-like forms, that's also another source of variety. If we're gonna talk about unity, the repetition and continuity of the gray in its different shades, you know, often there is a lot of continuity, but uh, even when the, it's stopped by something, there is just repetition all throughout. What else? Uh, for proximity, we could talk about the the, pa the pattern texture of the grip of the gun, plus its shapes and forms, and the shapes and forms of the the ring, which all could convey that they're working together to be something for you to, the part where you hold with your hand, you know, there's the grip, obviously, but then the ring it could be also something that you use to... Uh, maybe you tie something to the ring, right? Maybe you don't literally literally pinch the ring with your fingers but you know probably we could like uh, that's one way to look at it in any case how the proximity could communicate that um, <laughs> not sure that, that I guess it doesn't not sure how easy it is to co to conjure here what would be the the shared function of the proximity of the grip and the ring, but you know, that's an example of proximity. There, even if uh, we. There's proximity there, so there's some unity. Uh, what are they working for? It's a different story, you know? But yeah. Uh, but for example, as I said, either like a tire rope to it and so you grab it or something, I don't know. In any case, uh, those are examples of unity and variety. And so, what about the idea of conveying this is a weapon for Pyro Fortin Fortress 2? A Pyro Apple Fortin Fortress 2. So, um, this is Spyro known for using Grey Apples or something? <laughs> no, right? Uh, you might. Okay, okay, maybe this is kind of a spoiler, but you might be in your head comparing this weapon to the flare gun, which I believe came first, and which, which is a classic pyro weapon, I guess, perhaps. But uh, as far as unity and variety goes, okay, there is, I suppose, there is some variety in like the this like thick cylinder like forms and shapes of the grip and the other shapes of the gun. There's some variety there. But... Uh, sadly, it's just like, it's not the greatest source of unity and variety to me. I just wonder if I would uh, say that's good enough to convey this as a weapon for the pyro, secondary, for unity, you know, because there are other principles for us to look into yet. Uh, let me... Okay, since we're comparing it to the flare gun, let me just... Okay, it has a somewhat thick grip also. Mm. Yeah, okay, uh, I guess it is correct to say that, that there is some variety in the grip and some variety in the... It would be somewhat the, what, the thickness of the gun, the overall shape of it, in other words, like uh, this unique shape of this gun, it's not like, for example, there's not a connected double part of it at the back or something, you know, which would, would make no sense for design. But, uh, so those examples of variety, I think, help convey the shapes of a pyro gun, 
very roughly, probably the principal unit is not the best principal to that conveys that. As I said, it is not the the other stuff that I said is where I see more strongly unit in variety. But I guess if there is like a tiny bit, I still believe it is helping because if there is some of the principles there, that that's uh, that's how that matters, you know. I do believe some there's. I always use words like ah, I sit strongly here, I sit noticeably here, but I think it's. Uh, I would say stuff like that, but I believe that what's important if there is something. That's uh, what's important. And so, because the whole point is that if there is something when it comes to the principles, that means the author did something uh, when, in that way, you know? And if the author did something, and if that ties to the vision, then the author did something that accomplishes the vision, you know? Even if it's a uh, smaller thing. We are not basically trying to say which principle, what is the strongest principle. We're just trying to figure out if the author did what they wanted to do, what they tried to do, to make. And so, yeah. So, a bit uh, unsat unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory, perhaps. But I do believe the variety on the shapes of this gun help a bit convey that this is the a. Secondary for the pyro, one of the flare guns, like you know, but yeah, uh, but let's see. Probably, um, spoiler, I'm already thinking of a principle down the line that might fit this better, but anyway, I think units and variety are also there. What about the idea that this is sci fi? I easily know, uh, as I said, there is all the variety on the many weird details, and uh, as I said, that before a weird design, I do believe, helps convey a bit that this is sci fi. Uh, because if it's not sci-fi, what can it be? Maybe cosmic horror, maybe something exotic. There are a number of other options, but one of them I believe is sci-fi, and uh, I believe that's good enough. Uh, to me, at least. And finally, what about uh, not, this one's another one that's gonna be easy, right? What about the idea that this uh, extinguishes teammates? Well, we did mention the capsule as a very strong source of variety here, right? And uh, that's where the fire is stored when you suck up the uh, someone who's on fire. So intrinsically tied to the game mechanics. I just wonder if in game that's what really happens. I think it does because at least from. Uh, the back of my mind, I think there was like a visual effect of fire inside the, the cylinder. I would have to check, but uh, I don't know. Even if there is not, everything else fits so well in it that I think it's. Uh, I'm gonna guess here that it ju that's just the case. If I'm wrong, uh, too bad for me. <laughs> but I'm just gonna uh, assume that things work as the way uh, that I remember. And say that the variety here of the capture is helping convey that this you can extinguish teammates with this weapon. What else? Let's now talk about the principle of contrast. Uh, contrast is all about differences in the in the in the art and how impactful they are, stuff like that. So, for example, the red has a very stark contrast with the rest of the. <laughs> Gun, it's color, you know, because everything's gray, and then there's this one red here. Can even possibly help with emphasis, but emphasis is another principle, let's get to that later. Uh, I would also say that, like, the kind of roundish shapes and forms of the gun have some very interesting contrast with the wrinkled pattern uh, forms, for example, on the grip and uh, this part here. Uh, some very interesting contrast there. And, uh, and maybe there is some also, if again, this, this like rounder shapes and forms with the protruding parts, namely this antenna thing here. Uh, a little bit the trigger with this, it's hook, hook like shapes and forms. So, yeah, that's why I see this contrast most strongly. So, does any of that help convey that is a. Web Pyro Apple. 
Again, I believe, like, if, I, if, I, if you're gonna think of, again about the thing with the grip and the what body of the gun, I don't know. Uh, there is some so minute contrast there. Not sure, not sure what to say. There's contrast. They're different, you know. In their ah, no, but there is some difference in their placement because the angle that they are facing, I would say. So that adds some contrast to it. It would be it would be the shapes and forms, basically how they were laid about, the position of them, the composition of the art, in other words. And so I think that helps uh, add some contrast. That helps convey that this is a flare gun like, let's say. In other words, if somehow the grip of the gun was like completely straight, you know, if it was something that you held like this, for example, again, nonsense, somewhat nonsense for design, but still, uh, I don't think it would help convey that, but being shapes and forms in this angle, also, I guess, ties to the moderate use of space, right? Because, uh, because of this angle that we have this moderate space between the parts. So, shapes, arms, and space, all of these, I think, are helping us through contrast. Smaller contrast, again, the strongest points of contrast to me was the stuff I said before. But uh, this is small contrast, I do think it's enough. It's one of the things that, that uh, in other words, I would say that's one of the things that makes us look at this weapon and think, ah, oh, right, so this is like a, like a flare gun, you know, another way to look at it. Okay. Um, it is what it is, I guess. And that, as you can notice, I usually enjoy more when the most, the strongest principles, when a principle that was conveyed strongly is what helped in the vision, but in any case, it's not my job to, to, you know, look for what I want. My job is to look for what it, for what it's there. So, in any case, uh, what about the idea of uh, something sci-fi? For contrast, again, I did mention contrast between this like smoother and the rounder shapes and forms and the uh, wrinkled pattern the textures. And, okay, so the, um, hmm. there's contrast here, but there is also contrast on this grid part, right? Which I don't feel like it's anything sci-fi, so I don't think that the argument goes for the contrast between the textures and the... Uh, and the shapes and forms. The other alternative is the I, I did mention a contrast between like this rounder shapes and forms of the middle part of the gun and uh, the protruding parts of it, like this antenna thing, even the capsule and this flicker switch. That I think is helping. This the contrast just between this pattern textures here. I think it's something that different guns can have that doesn't communicate sci-fi to me. But stuff like the back capsule, the capsule on this gun, you know, being some protruding parts, the switch, this antenna thing, or I don't know. I do think those are details that, uh, to me, convey something sci-fi-like. And uh, a way that they are being conveyed is through contrast with the, as I said, the rounder shapes and forms of the middle of the gun. So yeah. And finally, what about the idea of something that uh, extinguishes teammates? True contrast. Uh... Ah, as I said before, right, the color, the red of the capsule kind of calls attention to it, you know, because there is like the gray and the cont and the red. When there is contrast between two, two things, both I think are more easily noticeable, and if we're noticing the capsule a bit more, a bit better, that means uh, I think the f idea that this sucks fire and stories in the capsule, capsule, I think that's been conveyed better, you know? So because of the red on the capsule and uh, everything else being gray, you know, if everything else, if everything was red, there would be not, not that contrast, but this contrast, I do believe it's helping convey the, that stuff, that uh, the gun sucks out fire and stories in the capsule. A very unique way to extinguish someone, I guess. <laughs> Right? Um, I, I wonder if that's even a problem for this critique, but in any case, 
I'm gonna be allowing just because of the way it works in game. I'm gonna be saying that uh, it's fine. Also, I guess uh, it's also making us realize that this gun is very great, but that's not here or there, right? <laughs> so that contrast, just let's say half of it, is helping the vision. Uh, if you say this is made out of metal, that doesn't tie with anything, so, you know. Uh, let's move on. Let's now talk about the principle of emphasis, which is all about there being some sort of focal point, uh, some point of visual dominance in the artwork. If we... another way to look at emphasis is uh, naming it as hierarchy, and if you think, say it like that, and then there are multiple ones, then there is like a stronger one, then a smaller one, so on and so forth. For emphasis on the man out, uh, let me yes, again reset my eyes. <laughs> emphasis on the man out. Uh, to me, is in the unique shapes and forms and space use of space on the muzzle of it. The capture, I mean, the red isn't is help. The red is, isn't going. Isn't bad, let's say it's it's helping some, I would say for the capture, but I think it's a bit small and a bit uh, hidden. And so, to me, the emphasis of this gun is more in the front part of it. It's uh, where the design kind of points to in a way to me. You know, because of the principle of movement, also for example, helping. But by the way, it's don't be surprised if you see different principles inf interfering with each other. Let's say that's the norm, actually. Uh, anyway, so that's very simple. It's just like, just like this whole shapes and forms of something that kind of, as I said before, kind of a, a thicker center, and then it gets thinner to the point of it. I think that's what's waiting more to me on the emphasis and thus making the muzzle here being unique, being, being the point of emphasis. If I were to think on the hierarchy and consider a second one or third one, uh, I don't know, maybe this middle detail here that's in the body of the gun around, kind of follows the shapes and forms of the Part around it, but also has some unique, it has some textures. I didn't mention the texture of it, but I guess it is would be some sort of a slightly elevated textures, a little, a bunch of nails or something. Uh, anyway, but to me, also being the center, the position, in the front of it, in the center of the gun, that kind of stuff is what would make me make it to me like a second point of emphasis. But the first one is on the as I've been calling the muzzle of the gun. Anyway, um, so, does any of that help convey that this is a power weapon? Don't think so. Again, like, guns have muzzles, but uh, TF2 and pyros are not the only things with guns, so, you know, we need a little bit, something a little bit more specific for that. And this detail part here that ties somewhat well to the structure of the gun. I don't see that helping convey that this is from Team for Pursue, less so or even that this is from for Pyro. So you know, just that. What about uh, the idea of of something sci-fi? So I mentioned before weird details from uh, like on the top upper part, this antenna thing, the switch and the capsule. And uh, one of those I would consider, I think, is this cage-like muzzle, you know? Uh, and since this is a, to me, the point of emphasis, I do think it's helping convey that this is sci-fi. Because I don't think any weapon nowadays that we know of would have a reason to have this kind of stuff. Maybe for style, but uh, as I interpret, it doesn't look to me like it was applied for style, necessarily. Maybe it was, but with the other rest of the stuff, it, to me it looks like it has some sort of purpose in its de in its design. But anyway, no matter what, uh, there being emphasis there, I think it's helping convey that this is a sci-fi gun. Ah, I guess uh, that's very interesting to think about, but technically something sci-fi can also have different aesthetics, you know? In the f think of that episode of Spongebob, in the future everything is chromed! <laughs> 
I, I watched it in Portuguese, I don't know if that's, that's how they say it in English, but anyway, yeah. Uh, Sci-fi can also have this, it's different aesthetics, right? That makes total sense, not only technology and stuff. So even if this is just for style, it could still... Okay, now, now we get into another discussion. Uh, this, the aesthetics of it look sci-fi. And, uh, oh yeah, well, I just said that before, right? The weird designs of it. I guess it's just that not only weird designs can mean unique technology, but can also mean just uh, a differentiated uh, aesthetical preference, right? Very interesting to think about, uh, at least for me. Anyway, but yeah, helping convey that this is a sci-fi gun thing. And uh, finally... What was the other thing that I was going to say? Finally, the last prince, the uh, last idea. Ah, the, the, the idea that this is extinguishes people. Uh, since I'm going from with what I have in my memory, that the top upper part is what uh, sucks out the fire. Just there being emphasis on this front part that shoots at people and this middle part, a hierarchy, a second place in the hierarchy, visual hierarchy, this thing here. None of that, uh, I think, help convey that this extinguishes people. This one helps convey that it shoots get something at people. <laughs> and this one is just like some sort of structural apparatus, I don't know, choice in the design. So I don't think any of that is helping convey that this extinguishes people. And uh, yeah, not for emphasis at least, right? By the way, before I move on to the... Uh, next principles, the last two principles. I didn't address the name of this weapon when in my interpretation. I didn't mention that it is the mum melter and the melt part. I think it, just like from the top of our heads, we could tie it easily to pyro, right? But uh, it's different to critique the name of something to, and to critique the art of it. It's imp the name is important for the interpretation. But it isn't the art itself, you know, just because the name, I think we could touch a pirate, doesn't mean the weapon we can touch a pirate. Because what if they, for some reason, decided that uh, this one, oops, well, can't I inspect you? Okay, uh, there we go. What if for some reason this was called the Man Melter? You know, at first it would make no sense whatsoever. But it would possibly be Tachi Pyro, but does it does this weapon, you know, the Fist of Steel would communicate that this is a Pyro weapon, it would be very weird, right? So just to say that those are separate things. Uh, but yeah. And that's why when I was talking about the other principles, I looked at the similarities with the flare guns and not the idea, not the game mechanics of it shooting something that uh, causes afterburn, stuff like that. I didn't mention that at all, right? And I don't see anything that conveys that in the gun. So just a heads up for you to be careful with this kind of things. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, let's move on. So we have only have two principles left to talk about, the balance and proportion. Let's talk about balance. Balance is all about there being some sort of equilibrium or lack of equilibrium or state of tension uh, or lack of tension. And so it's kind of hard to see that usually in Team Fortress 2. For the moment, uh, let's see if I can find anything like that. Uh, because everything is usually, usually like uh, some sort of finished product that, uh, you know, a weapon or a, a building or something, that uh, it's there, you know, it's stable and <laughs> stuff. So a lot of stuff in Team Fortress 2 is usually lacks uh, visual unbalance, usually lacks visual tension. And then one other thing that is also the case here, the protruding parts seem to me to be well fixated, stuff like that. I don't think there is a very jarring shift in the center of mass of this somewhere. If anything, it looks pretty much in the, the very center of the gun, the center of mass, visually speaking. Uh, oh no, you know, we could... If, we have, we'd have to hold the gun in real life to know if the center of mass is really in the center of it, but visually it looks like it's there, to me at least. Roughly. Uh, not perfectly, but roughly. 
yeah, I'm not sure I see any other points of uh, visual imbalance or visual tension. Yeah. This is in general just like balanced throughout. Uh, so, you know, er, er, if we're gonna be annoying and rigorous, annoyingly rigorous about this, every single protrusion technically shifts the center of mass, but uh, I think that's really pushing it. You know, I do think that's kind of missing the point of this critique. Uh, so, anyway. This being something mostly visually balanced, does that help convey the design pyro, pyro gun in some way or another? I think not, again, because we're looking for more something more specific. Just to say that this is visually balanced, like, how many things are visually balanced, you know? How many designs of uh, guns, but just things in general, are visually balanced, you know? It's just uh, too broad to direct us, help, conv help us convey that this is a Go for the pyro, as I see it, true balance. I mentioned other stuff that it apparently are, to me, are helping convey that. Uh, what about the idea of a sci fi gun object? Again, since everything is visually balanced, usually balance helps more when we look at where it is the tension, where is the lack of balance, because if it's uh, something, let's say, meaningful, you know. Then we could uh, tie that to the vision, perhaps. Uh, if it were annoyingly rigorous and say that this small protrusion is causing a little small shift in the center of mass, you know, that would be the, the logic. But I would counter argue that the grip of the guy is also doing that. <laughs> you know, that's why I don't want to be too precise for this kind of stuff, because it, it, it can, gets kind of a mess. So, okay, long story short, uh, since I see this as, in general, just visually balanced, I don't, I don't think that's helping with conveying that this is sci-fi. And finally, what about conveying that this extinguishes people? Again, it's, it's just something visually balanced throughout, so it doesn't say, it doesn't tell me anything when it comes to that. Uh, finally, the last principle of art for us to talk about, give me a second. The principle of proportion, about the sizes of things. Oh, what is bigger, what is smaller than what in the art? Does that is there anything with some very noticeable dimensions to it? So, for example, we could talk about like the body of the gun. Again, I don't know a better name for this, but the body of the gun, I would say, has some somewhat similar size to the grip of it which is bigger than, let's say, the capsule and the muzzle and uh, other details the, this part on top of it, the antenna thing, the trigger that's one way to look at it and we, I could even, even say, uh, uh, as I see it, that even smaller than those we have like this flicker switch thing and uh, the ring, I guess so that's one thing that I do also, I try to group uh, parts of the art in different scales to help us see who, what's bigger than what, or smaller than what. And so that's gonna, so just, so that's gonna be my grouping, <laughs> and just to recap uh, for this. So the body and the grip of the gun are on the bigger dimensions to me, smaller than that to have uh, the details like the muzzle, the upper part, the capsule, the antenna and the trigger and even smaller than those I would I would say are the flicker switch and the ring. I'm kinda of looking at things in broad terms, right? Because since 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 each of them have different forms, it's kind of unfair to you, you no, know, it's not perfect, no, it's not a perfect uh, grouping, but you know just broadly speaking here. And if we're gonna look at notes about dimensions here, anything that stands out to me? Um, I don't know. Nothing that stands out too much, honestly, to me. I say this the that dimension things because sometimes you have something with such a unique dimension that it's really just grouping things in size doesn't cut it, but anyway. 
So, without that said, does any of it help convey that this is a pyro gun for the shoe? So, um, before I said that I was thinking of a principle that would tie well to, that, to this idea, and it, it was proportion, because if we look, for example, at the flare gun, well, interestingly, the flare gun is way longer the, the barrel of the gun than the grip of it. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, but in any case, being... Maybe I can say that. I believe being both of those in the same scale, the body of the gun and the trigger, the, sorry, the grip, I do think help a bit convey the, the, the shapes of a pyro flare gun, for example, one of the flare guns. In this case, uh, it's a bit. If it's kind, of, we would kind of need to consider the muzzle also to have a proper uh, size, right? For, to compare very well to the flare gun and the other flare guns, the score shot and the detonator. But uh, I believe it's still good enough. Being a, there being a unique scale for it, I think helps call attention to those elements, and since we're there is attention being called to the grip and the body of the gun. I think those those are the parts of it that are that that tell me that I'll help convey that this is a pyro secondary. So that's what I was thinking of. Even though, to be fair to me, this still is not perfectly like one of those. As I said, we we kind of have to consider the muzzle together to have a better. Um, a very uh, close dimension to the flag, but still, I would again, like, to me, it's good enough to help convey that. And so, yeah, uh, what about the idea of a sci -fi, something sci fi? Uh, I don't think the proportions are helping with that because even if you have a lot of sci-fi weird details on the middle scale, let's say, as I grouped it, uh, namely the tree, the muzzle, the capsule, the upper part thing, the antenna, all of those are like weird sci-fi elements, right? But the one, there is this, the trigger, which is kind of hook-like, but I'm not sure how much that's like uh, convey sci-fi to me. It's... is it that weird of a design? I don't know. It's a little bit, but I... I don't know. Is it still a trigger? Honestly. It's just a, a stylized trigger, right? Uh, these things, it, I just can't exactly tell what they are doing for the gun in the first place. You know, the antenna thing, the... This platform part here thing? The capsule, you know? Uh, oh, it's, I mean... I kind of can't tell what they do if I ignore what we know, right, of the game mechanics and stuff. But just visually, I don't, they don't communicate to me what they do for a gun. But the trigger is a trigger, it's just a stylized one. And not only that, so all, and all of that's like in one scale, but not only that, the, the flicker switch thing is on a smaller scale to me, which is another like uh, sci-fi design thing for a gun. You know, a flicker switch thing in a gun could work or something sci-fi, I believe. But in any case, uh, through all of that being... So, the point is, things get kind of muddled then, for the proportions. There is this trigger in the same uh, scale as the other sci-fi stuff, and there is this sci-fi stuff that is on another... Um, scale, which is even shared with the ring, which again, I don't see as anything specifically sci-fi. So, yeah, I don't think the proportions are helping convey sci-fi-ness, let's say. And finally... What about the idea that this extinguishes people? Again, proportion-wise, I don't see it. Grip and body, don't think to say anything about that. There is the this upper part here with the suction uh, tube, let's say, and the capsule, but they are sharing the scale with the antenna thing and the trigger, so you know, doesn't tell me anything. And the rest is not here or there. The, the flicker switch or the ring. So, proportion is not helping. And that's it. Uh, we've covered our principles. And uh, from what I remember, at least one... Uh, uh, sorry. 
each and all uh, parts, ideas of the creative vision were covered somewhere, at least through one of the principles, I think. Oh, they had a, like two or maybe two or, or three, right? So with all that said, uh, my only logical conclusion here is to call this a successful work of art. Congratulations, creators of the man out there, you guys. I think you pulled off conveying, communicating what, what you want, communicating what you wanted for this gun, for the way it functions. Visually, I think uh, it's nice, successful. I don't think I don't know if it was Valve who made this one because I believe it was a community uh, an update that uh, with community made stuff. So maybe it was not Valve. I'm not sure. Whoever made this gun, I do believe you you had a good grip on things. <laughs> so that was it for the critic. Uh, join me on the next one.